Hello, welcome to Scabbard Hacks. Today, we'll talk about Python and getting that running in Emacs. Um, there has been a couple of years since last time I coded Python to any capacity in Emacs, and so uh, I kind of had to look at this with fresh eyes again, and what I used to have configured didn't work, or I had changed computers since then, so the language servers and everything wasn't installed anyway. And so I started out using LSP, and um, I ended up using the new Elon. So that this is the story about that. So Emacs is the editor, obviously, and I tried out a lot of different language servers. Uh, there are so many that are listed on the LSP website. And uh, PyWrite was the one that worked the best for me. I would say the only one that actually worked. Uh, so your experience may be different, but that, this is my current um, recommendation in 2023, April, go with Pyrite. So to install it, if you want to install it, just to get it up and running really, really quick, you do a pip install Pyrite. Um, this is if you develop Python without a project, uh, what's it called, a project build descriptor, like pip file, setup, CFG. Then you just do that and you run with it and you have something that works. Um, I would recommend though, if you have larger Python projects, you have things like pip files and, and set up CFD in which you define the different dependencies, the versions of the dependencies and so on. And then um, use, I use pip env and I get then a shell within my Python project and then I install my Python dependencies inside of that sandbox. Um, that works well for me and it makes me, it's easy to then separate the dependencies from one Python project to another Python project. Now, I really hope I will get comments on how to do this better, but I had to do pip and shell to get in the context of my project and then I did pip install Pyrite, that was good, and then I launched Emacs from there. It did not work to set uh, the environment from within Emacs. At least I couldn't get the work. I used the pip env Emacs package to activate that environment. That did not work. I tried to set the path variable manually to what pip env uh, is set. If you do pip env shell and what path is there, so. What I ended up with to get Pyrite to work with my Emacs project was I launched Emacs when I'm inside the pip and shell. So that, that worked. So to be continued. So anyway, all right. So now we have Pyrite in the install. And that's the beginning of our adventure here. So this is what you get. This is Emacs with a Python file in it. But let's have a look in the terminal. So here I have create a process PS3 of Pyrite, and as you can see, it now runs Pyrite within my project. So this is the local virtual virtual environment for my Gandalf project, and it runs Pyrite language server. And then that again launches a Node application. So Pyrite is a Node application, um, and it launches one, two, three, four, five, six processes. Okay, all good. It's just nice to know, and this is. Also nice for debugging purposes, if you wonder if Pyrite cannot find your third party dependency library, you know, you import, for instance, the Slack API, and you cannot find it, cannot autocomplete it. Have a look at here and you can see what context Pyrite uses. Right, so with that, I have now autocompletion not only for standard Python things, but also for the third party library here, the Slack Bolt API for creating Slack bots. Um, so I can do client, uh, which I define here, as you can see, as a web client. And I get real auto-completion of that. And it's a massive library. And I can even do control V to navigate one page down at a time because the list is so long. Uh, that's teams list. Um, as you can see here in the minute buffer, you get inline documentation on the different parameters you need. You can, let's say client, here I have a client chat post. You can see it, Eglot, it lists um, the first bit of the method signature. Um, 
and it kind of loses the rest. What I normally do then is I navigate into it. So that's meta dot by default on my system. And I'm now inside of my virtual environment for my project and then site packages slack, slack SDK web. So I can actually review the, the third party code that I'm using. And then I jump back with meta. What am I doing? <laughs> meta comma. <laughs> Extra go back. So this is standard uh, Emacs navigation stuff. Right? So you jump forward with meta dot extra find definitions and then meta comma to go back. So it hooks hooks that up really nicely. So it has auto completion, code navigation, even to third party libraries. Uh, it also does things like warning. So if I define a variable, uh, and if I have, if I can, I cannot type. I cannot type. Um, it warns me you haven't used this. It's not accessed. Better do something with it. You can see it color codes it a little different. Um, and this theme here, it's not that visible, but anyway, it's good enough. You can see it. So that's eglot for Python using the Pyrite language uh, server. Um, there is one thing more I would like to, sh to show you when it comes to Python programming that I find it wonderful when coding Python is that you have a really nice shell uh, where you can do things like, um, let's see, I can import the YAML library. I cannot because it hasn't the correct context. Okay, I can stand the library and import the OS and then I can do it OS dot and I get all the completion of the OS library in, uh, in Python. Um, so that's very useful. And of course it's a regular buffer. So if you figure out something, a nice command here, you know, uh, hello world, I can just copy that and paste that back into my coding session. That's very cool. All right, so that was Pyrite, uh, Eglot. Uh, yeah, uh, honorable mention to the LSP project. Absolutely, that's what I probably used a couple of years ago and that worked. Well, uh, this time around with Emacs 28.2, I couldn't get any of the LSP uh, client libraries to work. They installed fine, they launched the uh, language server processes, they even installed language services for me. That was all well, well and good. They, they e echoed, you know, it's connected to the session and, and stuff. It all looked right, but I didn't get auto completion. So I went with Eglot and that so far that works really well. Um, and of course, with Emacs 29, the next version, Eglot will be built in. So a lot of people will just use that if it caters for their needs. It does have, um, yeah, auto completion warnings navigation. It has a few IDE features like rename. So let's, if we write something from scratch here, so I, let's write something that reads a YAML file. So we import YAML, def read YAML, and it takes a file, right? And then what's it called? With open file as f, and then we do something like parse f, uh, perhaps yaml as dictionary here, and it says I haven't used it, so I'll just use it. Yaml as dictionary there. Now. Um, what was I saying? I forgot. Oh yeah, the rename. Sure. So let's say I want to rename file to file name. So I can then do egot rename then file name. And it does it correctly. Not search and replace. Jesus. So proper language model. Syntax tray. Something like that. All right, 
I think that's what I want to show today. Um, yeah, I'm running Emacs 28.2 here, so I had to do package install return elot. Um, will be built in with the next version of Emacs. Looking forward to that. Um, there's an integrated Python shell that I think you'll appreciate. It has syntax uh, highlighting and it has completed. Um, Right there, so here you can see what it looks like when it has, it can load third party libraries as well. So here I am putting the YAML library uh, and I discovered that open, here you can see open returns this text object and encoding UTF-8 and all that's very, very useful when you discover libraries and how to use them. That's it. I, these days I recommend for Python and Emacs, I recommend Pyrite and Eglot. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.